Oh, Kung Fu Panda 4. You're like Toy Story 4, but somehow even more pointless. I don't understand how you can get lower than Kung Fu Panda 3, which yes, I think that Kung Fu Panda 3 was disappointing. Everything was treated as a joke, the pacing was so fast in comparison to the original two, there's a forced love interest that has no chemistry with Poe, Tigress's journey is paused because now it has to be about Poe's other dad for some reason. The fact that this movie sort of spits in the face of the second movie where they implied that his whole entire race died, which don't say that the last scene of the movie explains a third because you know that they rushed that scene just to make the third one make sense. It's weird that in the third movie he goes through the whole you aren't my dad but now I know that you are my dad thing from the second movie. It just feels very repetitive. The humor is boring, the final battle felt rushed, the villain felt extremely underutilized, and there was this dated reoccurring character that the audience was supposed to laugh at just because they were on the spectrum. Oh you think I'm joking? Okay then why in the movie are they showing him as being different as if it's a bad thing where Poe is weirded out about his appearance and having this character be a stereotypical overly strong but dumb disabled person stereotype. Why is it that once they fix his teeth then all of a sudden he's seen as being attractive and likable? I don't know, I just feel like his character is extremely outdated and it makes me uncomfortable by the way that he's represented. It just feels very ignorant with how they portrayed this character in particular. I hate the overly cute and marketable baby trope that has been plaguing movies movies recently and it's fucking annoying. None of the fight scenes, I believe, really feel like there's any stakes to them, and I blame this on the constant non-caring attitude that this film carries. But I guess I can say that has decent voice acting and pretty decent animation, even if it's a little over-animated for me. I could go into it more and more, but this is about Comfy Panda 4. Just know that the reasons that I didn't like Comfy Panda 3 already made me extremely apathetic towards the fourth one. If I could grade Kung Fu Panda 3, it would have to be a 5 out of 10. I just think that people are misremembering the third one and they really need to like rewatch it because I feel like it's extremely underwhelming and I'm tired of acting like it's not. By the way, if you want my opinions on the first and second one, I'll give the original one like an 8 and then I'll give the second one a 9. I just like the more serious moments and more compelling character development in 2 than I do in 1. Anyways, on to the fourth movie. The only way to properly explain how I feel about this movie is that it feels like an extended Kung Fu Panda TV show episode. It just feels very low scale in comparison to the others. The animation was tolerable, but you could tell that the budget was reduced in this one. Oh wait, it was! Who would have thought? I don't know, there's just an overall decline in quality from even the third one. It just felt like this movie was obviously rushed and just didn't have enough time in the oven to properly bake. The whole entire subplot of the two dads just felt extremely pointless and it felt like they were just trying to extend the movie to a bare minimum hour and 30 minutes that it needs to reach. Sure, it's kind of cute how Poe's biological dad tries to appear as if he's tough, but it just feels like it just interrupts the main story. I can get if these scenes were added as a sense of levity to the scene, but there wasn't anything dramatic happening, so I just don't know why its inclusion was there. The villain has already been talked about enough, but yes, she is genuinely really bad. I know that I'm repeating internet discourse over her motivation of becoming a villain, but it is extremely stupid that her motivation is that she's too small to fight. And yes, I did laugh at her pushing that one guy down the stairs though. That's not intimidating, it just makes me think if these people at the table are even fighters to begin with. The main problem that I have with her is that I just feel like she's a carbon copy of the last villain. Instead of stealing chi, now she's stealing kung fu. Wow, that's such a big difference, wow. At least it made sense with the previous villain because it's a spirit stealing spirits. He is good with working with these spirits and trying to make them into this sort of hive mind army. What is the chameleon's character? Oh, she just steals it and doesn't really earn it. How anticlimactic is that? She doesn't feel intimidating then, she just feels like an extremely spoiled brat that gets whatever she wants. It may work with other characters, but clearly that wasn't the original intention that they were going for. So in the end, she's just a hollow husk of a character that I just do not give a shit about. Let's talk about the tone. It sucks. The tone is somehow worse in this movie because now everyone just acts like Poe. Even Shifu acts like Poe sometimes. There's this whole entire inner dialogue bit that had me genuinely looking at the floor from how embarrassingly unfunny it was. I hate the fact that they made Poe and everyone around him just so fucking dumb. Like sure, Poe had dumb moments here and there, but he was genuinely kind of smart. 
But no, in this movie, Poe just goes, Oh, hi, random stranger. Oh, you want my stuff? Okay, here you go. Oh my god, this random stranger that popped out of nowhere is actually betraying me? What? That's fucking crazy. This character now just feels like a person that just hasn't watched a Kung Fu Panda movie and is trying to envision what he's like, if that makes sense. I just hated how no one had a fucking identity in this movie. There's a scene in this movie where they're trying to show off this massive city and they try to imply that his journeys are lower scale and that nobody outside the village knows about his stories, which is blatantly untrue because he went to a big ass fucking city in the second one. Oh yeah, I forgot about Aquafina's character. Eh, I can say that this is her least annoying role. Like, she was in the boys cartoon recently and she was just genuinely terrible. She did a forgettable performance with bad guys. And it just felt like she was just trying to be like way too fucking quirky in the Rye and the Last Dragon, which sort of seeps into this movie. Her character most of the time is just lol, random, and it's just fucking annoying. So it's even more jarring when they tried to give her like this deep backstory, even though it's as deep as a fucking puddle. And I just thought that it was extremely stupid that she didn't know that the chameleon lady was using her. Like, she explicitly said that she does not care about anyone but herself. Why are you surprised? Are you that fucking stupid. I remember that there is these like murderous bunny sort of characters and it just feels like I was being marketed towards. I just hate the whole entire these kids look normal but they're actually extremely messed up cliche that I feel like has been hammered into the ground recently. There's this community of residents underneath the city that have this annoying reoccurring joke that Poe has to delay them from murdering people later and they use it three times and it wasn't even funny the first time let alone multiple times. There's a scene where past foes of Poe reappear from the spirit realm so they can be absorbed of their power but when the villain uses their power then they legit just become commentators over Poe's ending fight which is both sad and annoying. This movie is just such a fucking mess by so many angles. The animation was a downgrade, even the fight scenes were just meh. The villain is unintimidating and just straight up idiotic. Everyone is just so annoyingly stupid in this movie and it feels like they barely had a story that could just fill an hour and 30 minutes. It felt so so filler. It's not even okay, it's just bad. I hate that people keep on saying that this is mid because it's genuinely fucking terrible. Stop excusing bad movies. It's okay to shit on something from a franchise that you actually enjoy. Oh, I completely forgot to bring this up. The fact that the co-director had to beg the executives to just include the Furious Five and how they brought them back with just cardboard fucking cutouts of them is so disrespectful in so many ways. I may have a lot of problems with Kung Fu Panda 3, but at least the third villain actually connected to one of the characters and isn't just a random foe that isn't connected to the main character. And at least it has prettier animation. So I would have to say that Kung Fu Panda 4, funnily enough, is a 4 out of 10. It was disappointing and also not to mention, fuck you Mike Mitchell, you sexist entitled piece of shit. This movie only proves that corporate meddling with art does not work in the end. Art is generated by artists, not stockholders. Anyway, subscribe if you want to, like if you want to, even comment if you want to, I don't care, you do you, and have a good day. Oh, this movie makes me want to skadoosh myself. See, that's a reference to putting a bullet into my fucking skull.